Let's talk about water. Not just the sparkling blue stuff in lakes, but the kind of water we drink, cook with, and use every day. Ever wonder what makes it safe or why some water tastes weird? That's all about water quality, a set of characteristics that tells us whether water is clean, healthy, and safe for humans and ecosystems. Water quality isn't random. It's shaped by natural processes and human activities, and municipalities play a big role in keeping it clean and available. Let's dive in. Water quality is measured by several indicators. One of the most obvious is clarity. Clear water looks clean, but murky or muddy water might be full of sediments or pollutants. pH levels are another indicator, showing whether water is too acidic or too basic. Neutral water is best for most living things. Then there's dissolved oxygen, which fish and other aquatic life depend on to survive. Water with low oxygen can signal pollution or too many decomposing plants. Another critical factor is bacteria, like E. coli, which can make people and animals sick. Finally, we have chemical contaminants, like nitrates from fertilizers or heavy metals like lead, which can poison water over time. Human activities can seriously mess with these indicators. For example, agricultural runoff washes fertilizers and pesticides into rivers and lakes, raising nitrate levels and creating algal blooms that choke out oxygen. Factories sometimes release untreated waste into water sources, introducing harmful chemicals and heavy metals. Even everyday urban activities, like littering or overusing lawn chemicals, contribute to poor water quality. Septic systems, if not maintained, can leak bacteria into groundwater, and overextraction of water can reduce flow, concentrating pollutants. So, how do municipalities step in to fix this? Processing water for public use starts with cleaning it. First, raw water from sources like lakes or rivers is collected and screened to remove large debris, like sticks and leaves. Then it's sent through a process called coagulation and flocculation, where chemicals are added to make tiny particles clump together. These clumps, or flock, are heavy enough to sink during sedimentation, which removes them from the water. Next, the water goes through filtration, usually using sand, gravel, or activated carbon to catch smaller particles. Finally, it's disinfected. Chlorine is commonly used to kill bacteria and viruses. Once cleaned, it's piped out to homes, schools, and businesses. But processing is just part of the story. Municipalities also work hard to manage water usage. This includes building reservoirs to store water, repairing leaks in distribution systems, and encouraging people to conserve water during droughts. In some areas, cities use recycled water, treated wastewater that's safe for irrigation or industrial use to take the pressure off drinking water supplies. Education campaigns, like reminders to turn off the tap while brushing your teeth, also help people think about water as a shared, limited resource. Clean water isn't a given. It takes effort, technology, and smart planning to maintain water quality and ensure there's enough for everyone. By understanding the indicators of water quality, the impacts of human activity, and the role of municipalities, we can all play a part in protecting this vital resource.